Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Art 195, 3D Modeling for Animation, the Spring Semester 2022. Um, what we will be working on today are advanced surfacing techniques. Um, the example that you see in front of you right now, the simple cube um, with a window in it, and within that window are transparent um, panes of glass with slight ripples in them. And you all see the, um, the frame of the window that's raised slightly. And then also on the, uh, the cube itself, we have um, it surfaced in what appears to be kind of wood planks. Well, if I were to switch over here to Modeler and show you what it looks like, it's nothing more than a simple cube. Um, and to get the raised window, um, the only thing that I had to do is that I had to subdivide that single um, side of the polygon and then apply, um, uh, uh, what was it? It was a um, displacement map to it. So that's what we're going to do today. And we'll see if I get this done. Um, I don't know. But um, if we'll complete it, but we'll give it a try. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over to, I want to start from scratch. So I'm going to go back over to, to layout. I'm going to switch to layout. And I'm going to clear the scene. Because <clears throat> most of this is done in layout. Um, so let me go ahead and clear the scene. And I don't need to save anything, just I need to clear it. That's all. OK, and let's go back to Modeler. And um, I'm going to clear the model, too. So I'm going to go ahead and close the model. And let's start from scratch. So what we simply start with is a cube, and that's it. We'll start with the box. And with the numeric requester up, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reset and I activate. So we're going to start with a one meter cube because that's the default size. Now this, in fact, because I might have the settings a little bit differently. This is, yeah, it's a little over three feet. So that's, um, yeah, clearly one meter. I have it measured in, in inches and feet right now. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. And I'm going to put inside that on another layer a sphere. But before I do, I'm going to go ahead and create a placeholder for our surface. And I'll name it cube. I don't want it to be default. I'll just call it a box, whatever. And I'll make it kind of a light brown or something so that we can detect it from other surfaces. And then what I want to do uh, before I put that sphere inside, and the only reason I put the sphere inside is that when I create the transparent mask, um, that you can see something inside it. You can truly see that it's transparent. But what we could do is we could put light in there and that sort of thing and illuminate it and do all sorts of things. So um, I'm going to go ahead here and switch to polygon mode. I'm going to select this polygon, and I'm going to hit Q. And this one is going to be the window surface. This is the one that I'm going to apply it to um, create all of that complex surfacing that you saw a moment ago. So I'll name it window. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to make it a weird color here. I'm going to make it green because we're not going to see any of that green anyway. OK. So I'm going to go ahead and deselect that. And as I said, on a separate layer, I'll go ahead and I'll put a sphere inside this um, sphere. Let's go ahead and make it um, action, reset, activate. We've got that in there. Let me go ahead and shrink it just a little bit. So I'm gonna hold down the command key. It doesn't have to be quite so big. And I'm gonna fix it and then hit Q. And we'll name it ball. OK. 
And I'm going to go ahead and we'll just make this um, red, nice deep red color. Okay, there we go. So now I'm going to go ahead and save it. So we'll save our cube. We'll go ahead and save as, save object as. And I'm going to name it in here. Um, window demo. Spring 22. Okay, so I know which one it is. There we go. So now I'll go ahead and I'll send it over to layout. So I'm going to synchronize layout and I'm going to send it over there. Now we're in layout and let's go ahead and um, this is camera view, obviously. So I'm going to go ahead and move my camera around a little bit so I can see all of this a little bit better. So make sure that I have the camera selected. Um, let me go ahead and hit T for move. I'm going to move it up a little bit. So I'm looking down on it a little. I hit Y for rotate and move it down a little. And then I'm going to move this over. So we're going to see this at a, more of a three quarter view. And then I'm going to hit T for move and I'm going to move this over. And no, uh, yeah, we'll make this our surface here that we're going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and select the object. And I'm going to hit Y for rotate. And for the heading, I'll go ahead and I'll adjust it. Whoops, didn't want to do that. Undo it. Let's make sure that I have layer one selected, not layer two. And we'll go ahead and change the heading. Where's my green? There we go. There's a the green surface. It's on that side. So how about if I do it like this? Okay. There we go. Make sure that we can see what we're doing here. And if I want, I can change, I'll change some of the settings a little bit later. Um, so we're done with that. And now I'm ready to um, change the, I'll, I'm gonna go back to camera again, just for the heck of it. And I'm gonna go back and we're gonna start to revise the surfaces now. So I've already created, um, a series of two-dimensional objects that we're going to project onto here. And as I'm applying them, I'll go over them with you. So I'm going to go ahead and select um, our surface editor here. And I'm going to use old school. I'm going to go back to material and I have the box and I have the window. I just, for the moment, I just need the window. Now we have BSDF. And as I said, later on, we're going to use um, the edit, uh, use um, the graph editor in here. And this is where things get really, really complex. But that's, I think, for another day. So I'm going to start here. And instead of B, um, BSDF, I'm going to change that material and uh, here. And I'm going to go to standard. OK, and it just changes it to gray. So what I want to do now, and probably what I should do is show you before I do this is I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to um, open the various um, parts of the, the window that I plan on projecting on here because you need separate elements. I need an image of the window. Um, and then I need, um, in addition to that, I need the parts of the window, the frame. I need the window panes. I need the overall shape of the window itself to create what are called masks. So for those of you who have worked in Photoshop, this should be somewhat familiar to you. Okay, so I'm going to switch gears here. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to open up Photoshop. I should have already had it open, but I didn't. So that's okay. Give me a moment to grab some coffee here. Actually, it's T. Come on. 
There we go. Okay. I don't want to learn any more on this right now. I want to open. And I'm going to go to desktop. And I need to look at um, content. I'm going to look at the content fall 2021. Okay. And I'm going to go in images here. And the one that I want should be for our window. Because as I said, I've already done this. So here's the window and masks. So I'm going to open that Photoshop file, open up, and you'll see. So these are the masks that I created. And now I need to open up the one for the window. I need to open that one up. So here's the window, PSD. So the original files that I created for these are in Photoshop. Okay. But when you save them out, each individual image needs to be saved that you'll be using either as a Targa file, a TGA file, which is the, the kind of the standard lightwave file, but it can also be a JPEG that will work too. So this is the window that I've created here. Nothing spectacular, a simple two-dimensional um, flat object here that um, if we turn parts of this off, you can see that the window panes were separate elements. And I have the background here. Now, if you want, you can use photographs. You don't, I just used um, the shape objects to do this. And then from this, I went back in and used the same file, but I turned it black and white. So now I have, not only do I have my window panes, but I have the overall shape, okay? And then what I also need to do is create um, the window frame itself. So let me turn some of these back on. Let's turn that off. And I had to do the reverse of that. So what I did is I turned these um, white, and I turned this one on and I made this one black. So to show you really quick what I did, if I double click on here, um, I'll make this white. Because with masks, um, you, they have to be black and white or grayscale. So I did this for all four of them and I saved that out as a file too. So um, I hope all of you are understanding what I'm doing here. Um, the other thing is, is that you want this to be a perfectly square, um, the size of the document itself. It can be 72 pixels per inch, but you probably want to make it about a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels so that it's a good size for mapping on close up objects. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close Photoshop because I don't want everything to crash at the moment here. And there we go. So I have my images there. So the first thing that I want to do with the window pane is over here to the right where it says color. I'll leave it gray, but I'm going to click T for texture. That's what the T stands for. And then the E stands for envelope. So at any time, if you ever wanted to um, animate a texture, this is where you would do it. So let's say you wanted a flickering light or you wanted a, a, a texture to change color over time or things like that, that's what you would use here. So this adds the animation properties to it. And in our case, we don't have any at the moment, but I am gonna click T for texture. And what I want to apply is an image map. And that's what it, we have by default. It's planar, okay? We haven't selected our image yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and load the image. And it should take me back to our window here. So I want the window JPEG. That's the one that I want. And I want to project it. And notice that it's nothing is showing up. So let's switch from shaded solid to um, VPR and see if it looks any different. You know, nope, it doesn't look right. Now, the reason why that is, I'll just say texture solid again, is because it's projecting it along the Z axis. 
Let's project it along the Y and see what works. And let's project it along the X. The X is the axis that works. So it depends on how you make your object. And it also depends on um, when I made this cube a moment ago, this happened to be the X axis that it was, would be projected on. And it translates over to layout. So what we need to do next is we need to um, go ahead and I need to get rid of this background here. Okay, this is part of the image. And what I'm going to do in place of that is I'm going to put the, um, the wood texture back in here. So what I need to do, and I got that wood texture from some of the extras that I've uh, put inside. Um, and I hope I still have them that I downloaded it, but we'll find out in a minute. Um, so the, I, I put them in uh, Google Drive and your extra bonus kind of features. So to, to separate the, um, the background from that, I need to mask this background. So that means the whole thing. So I need that background image to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and by default, um, you know, check over here and check all my properties. And I used one meter um, uh, by default because it would, I wouldn't have to change the settings in any way. But by default, everything does repeat. So I'm going to select reset, reset, and I'm going to leave this setting. And if you have to, um, as we did with um, Reboot's face, I used automatic um, um, sizing. And that sometimes will get you in the ballpark, sometimes not. Um, but it will, it's a good place to start. So these are the settings that I'm going to use for the window. So what I want to do now is I want to take this and I want to copy it. So I'm going to copy current layer and I'm going to paste and I don't want to replace. I want to um, add two layers and I've just duplicated that. But now I need to use a different image. I need to use that placeholder. So instead of window JPEG, I'm going to go to load image. I'm going to go back here and I need to find my window. Not panes. There's the window mask. That's what I want. And that just replaced it. That's all it did. So what I need to do though, is for this to work, it needs to be not a normal layer, which is what we have under blending the mode, but it needs to be an alpha. And notice that I see the background, but I don't see the image. So that just means I need to invert it. So that's what I've done here. Now, what I need to do again, is if I want that wood background, let me go ahead again and let's um, go ahead and copy this layer. Okay. Um, actually, I'm going to copy this one again and I'm going to put this underneath. I'm going to go ahead and copy layer, copy current layer. And I'm going to paste and I want to um, add to layers. I'm going to move it down in the pecking order here. And what I want to do is I want to project um, the wood texture on here. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to replace the image again. So let's load an image. And hopefully, I have my wood texture in here. If I don't, then I there it is. There's the wood JPEG. Cool. I remembered to do that last time. OK. So now notice what's happened here. It's taking the alpha channel, and it's using it for both of these. OK. So it's allowing me, and this would be used, you know, if you wanted to apply text or um, um, something else, you know, on, onto a building or other elements that look like they were painted on or applied, um, I could do that. Now, if I, in a few minutes, I'll go ahead and I'll apply the same surface to the, the rest of the cube as well. But what I want to do is I want to start dressing up the window to make it look more realistic. So let's go ahead and under, um, we have window. So let me go ahead again. And what I want to do is I'm going to, I need to create what is called a transparent map. So again, still with the window selected, I'm going to come over here and notice where we have transparency. 
Now, if I select transparency and I make it, you know, 100%, it makes the whole thing transparent. I don't want to do that. If you do want to do it, then, you know, if that's your goal, then that works. But I don't. I only want the window panes to be transparent. And the reason that I've colored the window panes a light blue is because typical glass is a light green, a light blue, kind of a smoky gray, um, even though it is, you know, like a 90% transparency or even more, um, there is a slight color or tint to it. So under transparency, again, I need to select a map. Well, which one do I want? I want the window panes. So I'm going to go ahead and before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and take one of these. Let's take the window, the one that I just used here. I'm going to take the window and I'm going to copy it because it has all of my size settings, the texture axis and the reset. And if I had moved this at all, if I had changed the scale or position or rotation, it would keep all of those settings because they have to be matched perfectly in order to work. If they're off just a little bit, then things aren't going to look correct. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this current layer, close it, and I'm going to go back to the transparent layer, and I'm going to go ahead and paste. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and just replace, replace current layer. Okay, so it doesn't look like I've done anything. But what I need to do now, since this is transparent, I need to go ahead and I need to switch and I'm going to load the image and now I want the window panes. So for as many different, uh, where are they? Here are the window panes right here. Okay. So again, nothing is showing up because it just, you know, this is a transparent map. But what this should be doing is let's go ahead and we have layer opacity and let's go ahead and invert this and see if it works. No, okay. So I've got window panes, image map. Let's try alpha and that's not working. It should work um, under normal here. So let's see why it's not working. Uh, bo, 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 bo. I did change that. Yeah, it's a transparent map. And it probably should be the other way around. It probably should be inverted. Oh, I know why. Because I have it set the texture shaded solid. Let's look at it in VPR. There you go. So let's keep it in VPR. Um, and because I don't like looking at this bright, shiny, gradient background, I'm going to go ahead over here and just make um, the background black. So I'm going to go back over here and under backdrop, uh, I'm going to select over here, composite. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say use background here and close it. And it's really bright, so we may have to change the lighting a little bit, but you get the idea. And using that map now, notice that it made the window panes transparent. But probably what I also want to do is I don't want them to be maybe 100% transparent, but maybe 90% opacity. Okay, so I'll change that to 90 because what I'm gonna do in a moment, I want some of that bluish color to show through and I wanna apply reflective maps and I wanna apply um, bump maps so that it actually looks ripply, you know, like old glass. That would be another thing that you can do. So the more and more features that you can see, a lot of these things can be all be done with maps. Um, you don't necessarily need to get into really complex modeling. You can start with a very simple object, but turn it into something really elegant and visually quite stunning by doing nothing more than 
uh, starting, as I said, with a simple object and then creating complex surfaces. And that's what the goal of your next assignment is for those of you working in Lightwave is to do a simple toy. A simple wooden toy, a simple plastic toy, something that um, a toddler would do, you know, would, would play with, okay? So let's work to the next step. Let's, um, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select the box. And I'm going to apply to it. And I'm gonna switch to from principled BSDF standard, just cause that's what we're, be consistent. We don't need to do that, but apply a texture to it. And I don't want it to be planar because it pushes the plane it, it all the way through to the other side. I want this to be in fact cubic and it will take the same texture and apply it to all the sides equally. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take image and I'm gonna take the wood that I used and apply that, whoops, there we go. And there you go. So now we have a box that looks like it's constructed out of wood. Okie doke. So next step, let's go ahead and add some ripples to the, um, and reflective properties to the window panes. So I wanna go back to window. And what I want to do is I want to add a bump map to the, um, to the window panes. Maybe before I do that, I should act, I should, I could add a reflective map because glass is by nature reflective. And even though I don't have um, an environment, I can create an artificial environment by creating a reflection map for that. So let's go ahead and for the window panes, let's go ahead and add a reflection map. So under, um, not refraction, but reflection. Uh, where is it? Yeah, reflection right here. So I'm gonna do right here. Okay, and the same thing. Um, I could copy paste, but I'm gonna go ahead and reset. Reset. You know, I'm being a little sloppy here because if I if I really had to change the size or the orientation, um, some of these things wouldn't be matching up. But because I'm using one meter is my measurement size, uh, I really don't have to worry about that because that's the default size here. So the next thing that I wanna do is bring in an, um, I don't wanna use an image. Um, what I wanna use instead is um, uh, a, a, um, a procedural texture, which is created generically uh, or mathematically, so to speak. So, oh, I said this is a reflection map. Never mind. No, I do want an image. So I'm going to go back again to image. And I do want to put in here, so it's just the window panes. So I'm going to go ahead and I will use planar. I want it to be along the X. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I'm going to use the window panes. I'm going to invert it. See how it's reflecting. So I've got the window panes. Um, it's just reflecting light at the moment, but I want it to reflect an image. So let me go over here to, um, no, I want to go ahead and make sure that that's reset. Reset, I don't want it to repeat. I got that, so that's good. Um, image map, normal blending, I'm good to go. So that's fine. Let's go back over here now and let's look at shading model. And this is where we deal with, um, you know, we want it to, to render photo real, um, but what we want to do is to create that artificial background. So under reflection here, what I want is not just ray trace, but I want, I'm just gonna use a spherical map only. Okay. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select an image for that. 
I don't have it yet, so I need to load another image. And I should have something in here like, um, what did I have? Uh, I could use the sandbar that we placed the reboot character in. I think I used the, the river image before though. Okay. So that should be reflected in there. Okie doke. So if I go back now to my material, there we go. Let's go back to the material and let's go back to this and let's look at reflection. Okay, we have this set to by default 100%. Well, we don't want it to be reflected quite so much. So let's crank that back like so. maybe 25% or so. And I'm not seeing what I want here. So I'm going to go back again. Um, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this back to 100%. But for this window under reflection, uh, yeah, I do want that because it's set to 0%. So let's go back again and make sure that I have this selected correctly. Oh, why did I put, I th thought I put the image in. Okay, let's go ahead here and under the, yeah, just for that, this needs to be, so that it's only reflected there, but it's covering it up. So maybe this does need to be alpha but it's still not reflecting the way that I want. So I'm gonna come back to this. So let's work on the bump map. Let's work on the bump map, or actually the, we're gonna use a displacement map to bring the, the frame out a little bit. And also I still need for the, the window pane, a bump map, and that's found down here. So let's go ahead and apply the bump map to that before I bring in and I affect the window frame itself. So what I want to do again is I'm going to go ahead and I want it planar. I want it along the X. And that's something that I need to check too for that reflection map. Let's check that again. Yeah, that's along the X. By copying and pasting, I should have eliminated all of that. Um, oh, we have image map. So, yeah, that's the map. Okay. It should be reflecting that background, but it's not at the moment. So let me come back with the texture, the bump map. And again, I need to bring in here planar. Oh, it's along the X, um, reset, reset. And I want it slightly ripply. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it normal. I'm going to use the image map and I need to bring in again, the window panes. So let's use the window panes. And what I'm going to do is um, that's going to be my mask. So as soon as I go ahead and I apply another mask, I'm going to go ahead and copy this, which, um, so I'm going to go ahead and copy current layer. And I'm going to paste and I'm going to add to layer. Okay. And I want the top layer, this mask to be um, the, the window panes. So this is going to be an, an alpha. Okay. Then the one that I have down here, I want to be a procedural. And this is where we're going to get that bump, bumpy kind of image. So I'm going to use a procedural texture. And by default, just the turbulence should work pretty well. And notice it's applying it to the whole thing. So we're actually the outside, it's looking kind of bumpy out here, kind of a little bit odd. 
So let me select this one and let's make sure that I invert it so that it only applies it to the window panes itself and not the outside. So sometimes you have to, as I said, you have to invert that. Um, instead of one meter, I want it, it's a little bit too big, um, but maybe let's make it 500 millimeters and see how that works for us. Yeah, 500 millimeters and then 500 millimeters. And you should start seeing a rippling in the glass. And you'll probably see it more when I get the reflective properties to work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the reflection again before I apply my displacement map. And I'm gonna make this even a little bit smaller. I'm gonna go down to maybe 300 millimeters. Okay, now let's go back to, so far, so good. So I've got um, window pane is the, um, let's go back here. There we go. So turbulence is what we're using for our bump. Um, the window pane is what we're using for the mask. So it sh should only be applied to that. It's along the X. So you know what, I did the wrong one. This one should be one meter. This one I wanted to be the bump itself, that um, turbulence I wanted to be um, 300 millimeters. So I wasn't doing it right. And 300. There you go. Now you're starting to see some ripples in the glass. See how it's starting to look distorted in there? That might be overkill, but for demonstration purposes, that works pretty nice. So I'm gonna go back to my reflection map again. And click in here. And I'm gonna use this again as the alpha. And what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm going to go ahead and copy this, copy current layer. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paste. I want to add to the layers and I want it to be, yeah, it doesn't matter which one because I just copied it. And the one down here at the bottom, because the alpha always goes above. So this one down here is going to be set to normal. Uh, normal is at the top. And then instead of the white, what I want here is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to use that image of the river again. So it should be reflected in there. Okay, and so we do have some reflections going on in there. So this one looks fine. I don't want it to be inverted. No, I do. it's reflecting everywhere else. And I just want it reflected in the window pane. There we go. So that's inverted. That looks good. That is alpha. Um, it's probably cranked up a bit too much. We can go ahead and we can take this and change the opacity a little bit. But you know, I mean, it looks like reflective glass on a sunny day. What can I say? So I'm going to leave that as a, as a default setting for the time being. I'm going to close the surface editor because what I want to do now is I want to create a displacement map for the window pane. Now we've used sort of used displacement maps before, but not really. Um, what we have done is that we have used fall off, but displacement maps are like the maps that we've been using, but they actually affect the geometry. So what I want to do now is I want to go back to Modeler. And I'm going to make sure that the box is in the foreground. Come on. I want to make sure that this polygon is selected. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is 
is I'm going to subdivide it so that it can take on that displacement map. So to do that, we go to multiply. And I'm going to go ahead over here. And I want to subdivide. I want it to be um, faceted, not metaform. And you can see how it's subdividing it. And now we're going to do that again and again and again and again. So we get this tiny little mesh. When we were working with a reboot character. We did that as well. So I'm just continually getting, you know, just keep going a bit here. That ought to do it. Now we're going to triple it. So I'm going to hit Shift T. That triples it. Now let's go back over to layout. Switch to layout. Come on. There we go. And you're not going to see any difference just at the moment. But what I want to do now is I want to select the object. I want to look at the object properties. And what I want to do is I want to add surface displacement. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and double click here. One. I want to add the, the modifier. So that's geometry edges. Um, hold on here. I'm forgetting something. I'll just say one inch. But I need to apply the. Um, the map to that. So one inch. Okay, but it's going to apply it to everything, and that's not what I want. So let's go back to um, surfaces. I need to do that elsewhere. I need to come back over here. Oh, shoot. I thought I had this all worked out. Um, I want to add the displacement map. So let's turn that on. I already have it. So why don't I see it? Um, By double clicking on this, it should bring it up, but it's not. So that's the primitive. Let's go in here. Render. No. Maybe I made that a separate object. You know what? Um, I'm forgetting something here. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to go ahead and save this and open up the other one that I had. I'm going to go ahead and save this as seen as. And everything else is working perfectly right now. But to add the displacement map just to that, I need to use the image that I've been working with for the window frame, the entire shape of the frame. Um, or the window frame itself. So let me save this as um, a window demo. Uh, spring 2022. Okay. Let 
And I'm going to clear the scene and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring the. Um, bring the other one open. So I'm going to go ahead and open it. So load scene. I'm going to load the other scene that we just had here. The one that I had at the very onset that had the way it was supposed to look. So here's the window, original window demo. And see this one has, again, the, um, we look at it in VPR, it has the, um, the displacement map here. So I'm gonna go ahead under object properties. And here's the displacement map. So that was added. I'm gonna to have to come back to you. Hold on here. I'm gonna pause the recording. Okie doke, my apologies. Um, I did use a placement, displacement map, but again, I need to review my notes and go back in to figure out where I added those settings for that window frame. And then I'll get back to you on Monday with that. So you can see it and, and all finished. But notice that I turned here in the, this one that I did last semester, I turned the reflectivity down a bit. I changed the lighting so it's a little bit more subtle. In fact, what I had to do is I added a fill light over here to the right. And I believe I turned the environment light off altogether just to make it look a little bit nicer. But so far, everything else has worked beautifully. Um, it's just the last displacement map for the, for the window frame to make it project from the rest of it that I'm forgetting how I did, where I went in and did that. So that's going to have to be it for today. I uh, thank you guys for attending, and I will have this posted soon. Um, be sure to be working on your toy. And Brenda, you're working on an organic um, object. OK. So that's any questions before we leave today? Anything? put it up in the chat or if you have a question for me no okay yep i'm getting old what can i say my mind's uh slipping at the moment but i'll figure it out probably just two minutes after i uh, end our webinar um, it will come to me as you know how i did it but again these are all the things that you can do simply with surface textures, nothing more, nothing less. Take a simple object like a cube, and I put the ball inside so you can see something. And by applying image maps, bump maps, reflection maps, transparent maps, you can do wonders with objects and have absolute control over it. OK? The other thing that's nice too is that for those of you later on who plan on getting plan on getting into designing for games, this will be really useful because you really want to minimize the geometry. And this only has six polygons, and that's it. Actually, it has more because I'm going to use a displacement map. But um, initially, before you know, we added the um, displacement map for the frame, we had six polys, and that was it. Ideal for gaming, ideal. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say goodbye. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the recording and I will see everybody um, on Monday. Have a good weekend. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask.